Welcome back everyone, this is Travis here of Fisher Hex. Today's video we're going to be installing a Reef Octopus BR110 biopellet reactor on a 125 gallon reef tank. If you're not already aware of this, I have a DIY version of the Fosban 150 which has been on the reef tank since the beginning and it's been about a little over a year uh, since that reactor has been running. Now at uh, one point during the year I did end up going up to a Fosban 550 to get more uh, volume for biopellets but I just couldn't get enough flow through it so I ended up going back to the uh, 150 and now it's time to move on to another biopellet reactor. Now you may be asking yourself, why am I switching biopellet reactors after I've used that one for over a year? Well, the Fosbin 150 is starting to leak in several places. The ball valve is leaking that controls the flow. The seal underneath the cap is leaking. And plus the cap has a crack in it, which has been super glued together a couple times. And uh, it's just an accident waiting to happen. Also, the inside of it needs to be cleaned out every couple weeks, which is just a pain in the butt. So that means I got to take it apart, put it back together con consistently month after month. And it's just doing more and more damage and leaking more every time I do it. So now instead of it being in a, a risk to the reef tank, you know, the cracking and getting water over my apex or just leaking water down into the stand, soaking the floor and not noticing it, uh, it's, uh, it's just better off. I just go ahead and spend the money and get a new one. It definitely would have been a lot cheaper to go ahead and buy another Fosban 150, do the same DIY project, but just add those new bio pellets in there. Now the problem is, is I wanted to have a certain amount of bio pellets with a certain flow rate. Now unfortunately, the flow rate that I have in the Fosian 150 really wasn't what I wanted with the amount of bio pellets that I need for my reef tank. So I've been sacrificing flow in order to get the recommended amount of bio pellets, and uh, I don't really want to do that anymore. So in this new reactor, I've been able to put the amount of bio pellets that I want for my reef tank, plus get all the flow that I'll ever need for them and uh, not have to worry about them spilling over onto the screen, clogging up the reactor, and then unfortunately causing me to have to clean it every two weeks. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Reef Octopus BR series of biopellet reactors. Now on BulgariSupply.com, they currently have three different sizes available. They have the BR70, which is rated for up to 300 milliliters of biopellets, definitely too small for what I need. Now they have the BR110, which I purchased, and that is rated for up to 700 milliliters of biopellets. And then you can go even bigger at the BR140, which is rated for over 2,000 milliliters of biopellets. Now I was thinking about going with the 140 just because I had the potential of growing to that many biopellets. But even with the new 300 gallon build with a 100 gallon sump and maybe a 60 gallon cube attached, I just, I'm never going to use 2,000 milliliters of biopellets, especially with the way I run my system being already low nutrients. Having that many biopellets would just pretty much probably kill my whole system if you really think about it. That's just way too many. So uh, with that being said, I just went ahead and saved the money and got the BR110. And it actually works really, really well, and I'm really happy with the purchase. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the stats on this BR110 biopellet reactor. When it comes to dimensions, we're looking at a diameter of 4 inches by 21 inches tall, a footprint of 5 and a quarter by 5 and a quarter inches, and then when it comes to inlet and outlet of water flow, you have two choices. You can either use a half inch PVC direct connect or you can use the supplied barb fittings. It comes with three different sizes. Now, I chose to go with the barb fittings for this particular build, but when I go over to the 300, I'm going to go ahead and do it hardline PVC on the inlet. But I'm still going to use the hose on the outlet because, as you guys seen in previous videos, the biopellet reactor outlet hose needs to be cleaned at least once a month to make sure you don't have any clogging, especially if it's going to a skimmer. You want to make sure you have good flow going to that skimmer. Now, low capacity for this biopellet reactor is 700 milliliters, but I definitely have a feeling you can get up to close to 1,000 if you lower the flow and kind of squeeze everything in there. But we'll see down the future if we ever end up going that high. Now, recommended flow rate, we're looking at 520 to 790 gallons per hour. I'm approximately about 800 gallons per hour going through this reactor, judging by what's going on and the rest of the equipment that is attached to my manifold. So with that being said, let's get into the actual build. When it came to connecting this reactor to the reef tank, it was pretty simple and it didn't take that long at all. But just in case, I went ahead and lowered the flow on the JBO DCS 12000 to about halfway. I turned off the manifold and this just allowed flow to go back into the main display, into the refugium and continue to process because I really wasn't sure how long it was going to take. The next thing I did is I went ahead and cut the existing tubing to the Fosban 150, replaced that tubing with new hose because that one was kind of looked like crap. And then I went ahead and I still used the existing output hose to the skimmer that was on the original reactor. Other than that, it was pretty simple. The only time consuming part of this entire project was trying to measure out the bio pellets out of the old reactor and getting them into the new one. That was it. Other than that, everything worked out great. The flow was amazing. And I'm really, really happy with how everything's working out at this point. So you guys might have noticed I didn't add a ball valve to this reactor like I had on the previous build. Now there's a couple reasons for that. The first one is I didn't really need one in the first place. Everything that's connected to this manifold, including the main display, all have ball valves so I can manipulate the flow any way that I want. Now the second reason is the reactor previously had to be turned off every time I did any maintenance or mess with the return pump because 
When the return pump kicked back on, it sent a ton of flow through that reactor, pushing the bio pellets all over the place, and they would get stuck up on the screen, as I mentioned previous, and they would clog up the reactor and need to be cleaned. It was just a big pain in the butt. And sometimes they got through the screen, depending on how they went up there, and then they would go into the skimmer and just be all over the bottom of that section of the, of the sump. So it was just kind of a pain in the butt. Now with this one, the reactor is pretty tall, and no matter how much flow I get through there initially, they're never going to go out of that screen because it was built correctly, and I don't have to worry about them getting stuck because there's just not enough flow at first to you know, lodge bio pellets in that part of the screen. As I mentioned previously, I went ahead and I measured out the existing bio pellets in the Fosban reactor. When it was all said and done, I had approximately 450 milliliters. I personally like to keep my reef tank between 500 and 700 milliliters based on the total nutrients I add on a daily basis. With that being said, there are a few things I have to take into consideration before adding more bio pellets to this reactor. One, I definitely did add a lot more fish over the last month, and I am feeding them a lot more on a daily basis to keep the tang aggression down. On top of that, I'm also feeding my eel a lot more so he doesn't eat anybody else in the tank. It just seems to be a process I'm going through right now. On top of that, I have two thriving refugium. The display refugium is going crazy. The refugium underneath the reef tank is all right. It's growing slow. The chato doesn't really grow that fast anymore, but the calerpa side of things is definitely growing pretty quickly. On top of all of that, I have four 8x8x4 eight by eight by inch marine pier blocks in the sump. Two of them are relatively new, so I'm waiting for them to break in and you know, process waste efficiently. But that's 2,000 gallons worth of biological filtration surface area. And I have to be careful on how much uh, filtration and all that kind of stuff I add to this reef tank because I don't want to strip the nutrients completely. Now, I am doing a 20% water change every two weeks as normal. Nothing's changed with that. But I have to be very, very close. I have noticed that some of my corals are starting to get lighter in color, which indicates that I'm having very low nutrients. Now, I've combat this by feeding the corals more, by feeding the fish more, and continuing everything else to be normal. But there's a fine line that you kind of walk when you have a lower nutrient system. And if you go over that line and get too low, you can pretty much kiss everything goodbye. So with all that being said, I went ahead and I added 150 milliliters of bio pellets to this reactor. Now the process is simple. I go ahead and I measure out the amount that I want. I let it sit in RODI water for 24 hours, kind of allowing them to absorb the water so they don't float as much in the reactor. Then I just went ahead and added them to the reactor. And it's been about two weeks now. I didn't have any bacteria blooms. Everything seems normal and my nutrient levels are still low. And I'm comfortable with the results that I'm getting from them at this point. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. For those of you who plan on implementing bio pellets on your reef tank or have done some research on them already, I suggest you go ahead and check out my beginner guide in the description below on bio pellet reactors. Uh, that video pretty much goes in depth on everything you need to know to be successful, and that way you don't end up killing your reef tank. Now, I say that a lot because uh, bio pellets kill reef tanks. Without a doubt, they kill fish too. When you overdose a reef tank by just throwing on a bio pellet reactor, putting the uh, recommended amount for your reef tank in there, most people wake up the next morning or the day after to a dead reef tank. It's just something that happens. You can't do it. No overnight success is going to happen with a bio pellet reactor. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, put it in the section below, or you can contact me on Facebook or directly via email. Either way, I'll get back to you. Anyways, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.